All right, my weather's not as favorable the past two days as I would have hoped, but uh, I didn't get a chance to make this video yesterday. It can serve as an informational video for anybody who is curious about the same types of things, which pretty much works on most vehicles, but also in particular for Harry, who has one of these cars, and I know it's kind of on the wire as to what he's going to do with it, but the one thing I mentioned to him was about the vacuum lines. These things had notorious problems for vacuum lines when they got older. Old, brittle vacuum lines to pollution control and all sorts of crap. Um, for example, Harry, what I did, as you'll notice, that there's no air pump on here. Normally there's a big chunk of a pump here, and then there's a pulley with a belt and a plastic shield over it. I got rid of that all. Took the brackets off, everything. There's still a hole in threads, even though this is not the stock cam for the car, but whatnot is still made to work with it. And I just removed it completely, let it spin in the free. It's not going to hurt anything. Your cam seals here. It ain't going to hurt nothing. A lot of crises are unopened like that. Not a big deal. But I pretty much removed most all the vacuum lines on this car. Let's see. I believe, really, the only real vacuum line that you really need, basically, you've got... This vacuum line that runs from a main nipple, whether in the back of the carburetor or in the intake, it varied from years, that goes and supplies power to your vacuum brake booster. Another vacuum line here, sometimes two of them, mine I've got one of them is disconnected because it's for an air conditioning piece that we don't use. So most of the cars it's just one vacuum line. Um, this supplies the source to change the doors and whatnot inside the car, or to go from like defrost to vents to floor. Those are all vacuum actuated. And then the other main particular one is this one here. Um, I don't remember if it goes here originally or not, but you just find a good vacuum source. It runs around, I've got some steel braid on it, and comes up to the computer. And it sends a vacuum source to the computer. Um, because most carbureted engines in the older days didn't need something like this. But because this car is designed to monitor its own timing curve, that's the main thing there, and of course it tries to adjust its um, air fuel mixture through the carburetor but that never really worked all that great mainly it's the timing thing um, most carbureted older engines especially v8 things and other four cylinders you see japanese engines will have um, a vacuum advanced system or mechanical advanced system in the distributor to change the timing whereas these do not inside here is just a, a wheel with four, four little metal tabs that runs through the pickup coil, which is what the wire is coming out of here, to tell the computer to spark, because it has no points, no advance, nothing. The thing that sucks about it is you cannot run a standalone MSD 6A box on this vehicle, because we need the factory computer to control the timing curve. Um, one thing to know if you ever have issues with the car running weird, the if you've timed your car or not, the um, temp switch here has to be unplugged to set the timing because that also changes the timing curve. So yeah, kind of halfway between fuel injected and carbureted when they had designed this thing. Basically everything else in the carburetor, I've got vacuum caps on all the other ports that we don't use. This is a vent port for the fuel bowl. You don't want to cap that. I can't imagine it would hurt too much if you did because there's a vent on the upside too, but either way you just leave it open. Nothing comes out of there. You know, if you don't feel vacuum coming out of it, that's pretty much all there is to it. But it's usually right next to the fuel line. My carburetor's going to look slightly different than the one that you probably have because this is a Reman Holly from an 81 Omni that I got from Napa. And it was weird, it's the first time I've seen a setup like this where it kind of slopes down like this, kind of weird. As for pollution control, I have removed it entirely. And there's three lines going to the fuel tank. The thickest one is, of course, the feed. The thin is the return. I mean, the medium size is the return. And then there's a really thin one, which comes out right here, is uh, just your vent for the tank. You can pretty much just leave that open. It's not gonna harm. I never smell any fumes or nothing. Now, the only thing that might be somewhat confusing is if you have a vacuum secondary carburetor, which I might have spoken before. They suck. They suck balls have on the side of your carburetor a big vacuum diaphragm here that hooks up to the secondary um, throttle opening. Well, sucks to be you, I'd get a different carburetor, but uh, <laughs> that pretty much has its own vacuum lines connected to the carburetor you don't need to mess with. Basically, the only thing you need to deal with is any vacuum lines coming out of the carburetor and going to something else in the car. Like I said, all you need is 
if you have a PCB valve going from um, if you have this if you have the factory valve cover which I don't <clears throat> you've got the big box here and a vacuum line that goes to the carb that's fine so other than that the only vacuum lines you need are the vacuum line that goes from the intake manifold to the vacuum booster and then of course the vacuum booster usually has its own split to go to like I said the vents in the car and then another vacuum line here that goes up to the computer and uh, I replaced my vacuum line altogether. I mean, the stuff gets so old and brittle, I wouldn't want to screw around with it. I would just go out and get some rubber hose. And this is actually a piece of fuel line. Vacuum line is cheap. This is the only part that I didn't replace because this is surprisingly in okay condition usually. But uh, yeah, I replaced all of that. And needless to say, it gets rid of a lot of problems. I did the same thing on my red charger and got rid of quite a few of its problems because the stock cars, you know, they have a vacuum line thing that has three vacuum lines here that goes to the carb as well. Just a bunch of garbage. Just useless garbage. One of the annoying things, like I said, the problem with my red charger when I had first got it was it had that vacuum secondary carburetor because an old man drove it and never, you know, went above 30 miles an hour. That secondary valve never opened. I'll show you a secondary carb that I have in the garage, but it's not a Chrysler one because I don't keep those on hand. Hey George! Turn off the alarm. I don't keep those Chrysler secondary ones on hand, but I do happen to have an Isuzu secondary carburetor for a little truck I have up north. As you can see right here, not real good light here. Let me find a better spot to show you this. This piece right here opens its secondary valve. So basically what happens is when you pull the throttle open, it never opens that physically. It relies on vacuum to open that. And because the old guy was driving it, he'd always just putter around town, you know, it would never open, never go on the freeway, nothing, you know? So then when the guy got the car from, when he got it, you know, he tried to drive it and he'd cram on it. And this would open because the vacuum system was still working, but of course everything was plugged up in here. So all of a sudden the engine would get way too much air and it would just start choking out and just about die unless it could let off the gas. And that is a common problem with these secondary vacuum carbs. I mean, they're garbage. I mean, I don't like the idea of relying on that. The fixed connection is much better. I think just about any old guy who plays around with old V8 toys will tell you the same thing because most of the aftermarket Hollies and whatnot that you get will be mechanically connected so that way you don't have to rely on that kind of garbage. But, uh, yeah, still trying to find my garage. Heavy's probe. Kind of a little more daylight now. I've still got on a minute or so left that I can film. But, uh, yeah, we're getting there. We've been working on this. Right now it's computer wiring time. Then we got to get the front clip and the headlights back on and everything. But, uh, yeah, at least I can move it in and out of the garage now so I can do some cleaning. Because as you can tell, i got a lot of junk. And it's hard to get rid of stuff because I'm such a pack rat. You'd be surprised at what I find that comes in handy. i got to get my counter cleaned off so we can start seeing that again. There's even stuff on my sink I can't get at anything. Oh well, Evie's corner. We've got all the parts for his new motor and everything sitting here. and Everything pretty much just waiting for him to be ready to put that motor together. So I've just kind of made Abby's corner and it's kind of spilling over onto my sink right now. Oh well. I guess bit by bit. Well Harry, I hope that um, helps you out to understand what I'm saying. And like I said to Harry and to anybody else, if you ever have any automotive questions, go ahead and uh, send me a message. I'm more than happy to uh, try and help people out and help people with the learning. I'm uh, pretty much the only thing I have any knowledge in is automotive basically and a little bit of computer stuff so I might as well spread what little bit of knowledge I got I suppose are. Huh? Well, like I said, any questions feel free to ask and Harry, uh, I hope this helps you. I, like I said, it makes a big difference <clears throat> to me as to what you have to do to fix your car and make it run a bit better. Because like I said, it sounded like yours was running a little rough and having some issues and you'd be surprised what vacuum lines can do. So, see y'all later.